Hello, and welcome to the League of Legends Strategy Guide. In this video, we'll discuss the different monster camps plaguing the Rift, along with the Dragon, Rift Herald, and Baron bosses. When playing the jungler role, the main way to earn gold is by killing the different monster camps. Luckily, they're the same on both sides of the map, so each team has the same monsters to choose from. First, there's the major buff camps. These camps typically are the starting point for a jungler. There's the Brambleback, also known as the Red Buff, and the Golem, also known as the Blue Buff. When killing these camps, the player is rewarded with a beneficial effect that lasts for two minutes. Let's start with the red buff. When a champion has the buff, the next basic attack they'll use will apply a damage over time effect, will slow the target based on level, and will heal the holder over time based on their maximum health. For the blue buff, when a champion has this benefit, they will regenerate their mana or energy over time, and provides a cooldown reduction on their abilities, making it easier to sling out some spells. Unfortunately, if a player is killed by another player while having one or both of these buffs, the killer is rewarded with the buffs for the remainder of the cooldown. As for the other non-boss camps, they no longer provide buffs when slain, but each has a different attack pattern, so it's a good idea to know what you're getting into. First, we have the Raptor Camp. This camp, located near the middle lane, has a pack of fierce chicken monsters that will swarm an opponent to take them down. Individually, they don't do that much damage, so it's a good idea to use some area of effect or multi-target abilities to take them on. Next, we have the Wolves, a simple pack of doggos that is a good mid-damage camp. They don't swarm to overwhelm, and they don't hit too hard. They're located near the blue buff on both sides. Next, we have Gromp. Gromp is a mutated toad that has a lot of health and applies a damage over time effect to the attacker. He's usually next to the blue buff and is known for cleaning up kills after a failed gank attempt. Finally, we have the Krugs. These tanky little critters don't do that much damage, but will split after death and will swarm over the attacker. They are known as the disease of the rift, as they will just not stop spreading. An honorable mention is the Scuttle Crab. This little guy patrols both sides of the river, one close to the dragon spawn and one for the baron pit. They don't fight back, but can dash away and are difficult and frustrating to kill. But after slaying the mighty crab, the attacker is awarded with some health and gains vision for the team for a short time. There's also some interesting foliage on the rift. First, we have the vision fruit, which, when struck, gains vision in a cone, revealing wards, enemies, and traps. Second, we have the satchel fruit, when struck, will launch anyone around it up and over terrain. This can be useful for escapes, or you can be like me and kill your teammates accidentally. Oh. oh. Sorry. Sorry, Brand. I'm sorry, Brand. Brand, I'm sorry. Finally, we have the honey fruit, which, when struck, will place some fruit on the ground, healing, restoring mana, and slowing anyone who picks them up. However, the scuttle crab loves honey fruit and will try to eat them all before anyone else can. The last group of monsters we'll talk about are the boss camps. These require multiple people to take down and provide benefits for the entire team, but they only spawn on two places on the rift, the dragon's lair next to bottom lane and the baron pit near top lane. First, we'll talk about the dragon, or dragons as they're multiple kinds, each with different benefits. However, which dragon you'll encounter is different every time, as it runs on a random spawn raid, so you can see the same dragon over and over, or each one separately. First, we have the Infernal, or Red Dragon. It is considered the most generic of the dragons, and does damage in an area of effect cone, but when killed, it provides the team with the mark that increases damage throughout the game. Next, we have the Mountain, or Brown Dragon. It's the tankier variety, as it has higher health, armor, and resistances, but when killed, it provides a buff that increases damage to towers and other boss monsters. Next, we have the Ocean or Blue Dragon. Its benefit is arguably the best, as it restores missing health and mana to the team that takes it down. Its attacks slow the target, making it harder to disengage. Finally, we have the Cloud or White Dragon, which, in my opinion, isn't the most viable objective, but it really benefits your team if you have a ton of movement speed champions. It attacks the fastest, and when killed provides a buff that increases the movement speed of any teams that take it down. Each buff can stack as many times as you slay that kind of dragon, but because the spawn rate is random, you could have one of every buff, the best of one buff, or any combination in between. At 35 minutes into the game, the Elder Dragon will spawn instead. This bad boy has a ton of health and is super hard to take down, 
but if you do, the team is rewarded with a bonus for each other dragon buff you've earned throughout the match, and a buff that increases true damage. Looking towards the top lane, we have the Rift Herald and the infamous Baron Nasher. The Rift Herald will spawn early in the game, and when slain will drop an item. If a member of the team that killed it steps over the item, they gain a trinket that'll summon the Herald, who will help push lanes and melts towers like butter. However, it can only be summoned once per game, and it has a massive weak spot. After starting the fight, after 3 seconds, the eye on its back will open, and, when struck, will do massive damage to the Herald. Finally, we've come to the big kahuna, the monster to end all monsters, Baron Nasher. He's the boss of the rift, and spawns later in the game, regardless of if the Herald has been slain or not. He does a basic melee attack that hits like a truck an area of effect attack on anyone behind him, will summon spikes under anyone too close to him, and will spit out acid. But once you take this beast down, he rewards all living team members with the Hand of Baron, which gives them bonus magic damage and ability power to each member of the team, a faster recall timer, and if a player with the buff is close to minions, it will spread to the minions, increasing their size, strength, and health for a short time. This buff is great for pushing hard into the enemy base to take towers, inhibitors, and to destroy the nexus. When dealing with these terrifying beasts, try using the practice tool to get better understanding of what they do and how best to take them down. Thanks for tuning into the League of Legends Strategy Guide, and I'll see you on the Rift.